Hello and welcome to the Shaky Science Show. In this video, we'll look at LMN, the what, the why and the when with ageing. And Happy New Year! I now have a new logo and a new microphone that I'm testing, which actually I don't think is any better, but we'll just go with it. And so the idea for this video pretty much came from last week's video when I discussed David Sinclair's recent book, Lifespan, which you should check out as well. And so this video is going to look at NMN, what it is, and really go into the science behind it. And this is mainly why I made the video, it's why are people taking it and what is the link between NMN and ageing? I thought it was interesting from his book, so I've gone a little bit further with that. And also, when should you start taking it? If you should start taking it? These are all kinds of the questions that I'm going to discuss in this video. But firstly, what actually is NMN? What? My name is what? My name is... No, it's not that NMN. This is why I'm a scientist, not a rapper. So NMN actually stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and it is a precursor for NAD. So NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and it's a really important cofactor in biological systems. In fact, you could argue that NAD is the most important molecule in the body, maybe with the exception of ATP, but without either of them, you're dead in around 30 seconds. That's what David Sinclair says. And he's right. In order to understand why people would take NMN, you have to understand why we need NAD. And so, as I said without explaining, NAD is a cofactor, and so cofactors are required for enzyme activity, and enzymes are proteins that catalyse biochemical reactions within cells. And NAD is one of the most abundant molecules within the human body, and it's required for around 500 different enzymatic reactions. And apparently the average person has around 3 grams of NAD within themselves. And so NAD has two main functions. The first one is as a redox coenzyme, so this is where it acts as a cofactor with the metabolic enzymes. And secondly, it's a substrate for NAD-dependent enzymes. So I should really be saying NAD+, because it is the oxidised form that is used in these different cases. And so NAD+, is essential for sirtuin activation, and so sirtuins are these NAD-consuming enzymes that I just mentioned. And NAD is also essential for metabolism, as I said, and that's including the metabolism of fatty acids and glucose. And associated with that, it's the generation of ATP, which is like the cell's energy source. And then lastly, well, there's many things that it's essential for, but it's also essential for activating DNA repair enzymes. And again, there's a family of these enzymes that are NAD plus consuming enzymes. So we can see that NAD plus is important, but what is the driving factor behind the, the use of supplementation? You know, surely we already have NAD plus in our bodies. Why take more? Well, as I've written out, NAD plus levels decline as we age, when we have more DNA damage and during alcohol metabolism. However, our NAD plus levels can be restored during uh, energy deficiency. So that includes fasting, calorie restriction and through exercise. But an alternative, potentially more efficient and more effective way of restoring NAD plus levels is to supplement with NMN. So important point here, as far as I'm aware, there is no definitive proof that taking NMN would have a beneficial effect on humans. However, there's lots of evidence from studies in yeast, worms and mice where NMN to, has actually increased the NAD plus levels and this protected against a variety of age-associated declines within them, such as declines in mitochondrial dysfunction, declines in physical performance, muscle regeneration, arterial dysfunction, and also prevented from declines in fission and in insulin resistance, so like type 2 diabetes. In addition, you can see metabolic and neuroprotective benefits. But why and how? So to understand this a bit more, we need to go into the generation and use of NAD+. So as I already mentioned, NMN is a precursor for NAD+. And another molecule called NR, or nicotinamide riboside to be more precise, can also be converted to NMN, and NMN can also be converted back to NR. And so what I've written out in black here are just the different enzymes. So you've got CD73, NRK, NMN80. Don't worry about what they stand for. This is way more information than I was meant to be giving you. 
But my point is, is that there are these precursors that generate NAD+. And you also may have heard about NMN versus NR, which is better. And I might do a subsequent video and look into more detail between the two because it is interesting as to what could potentially be more effective. But as you can see, the metabolism of NAD, it's actually quite complicated. And to be honest, we didn't fully understand it either at the moment. There are different pathways that are being discovered um, still today. So yeah, we don't have a full picture of the metabolism yet, but you have roots of generating NAD plus from NMN, but also de novo from precursors such as tryptophan. And another molecule you might have heard about is NAM, which is nicotinamide. And so NAM is generated as a product by these NAD plus consuming enzymes. So this includes sirtuins, CD38 and PARP1. So I'm pretty sure I've probably confused you by this point. So I'm going to simplify it a bit further and just focus on the generation of NAM from the use of sirtuin activity, because that is the most interesting in terms of understanding the link between NAD plus and aging. So now you might be wondering, well, what are sirtuins or sirtuins? I don't actually know how you meant to pronounce it, but I give sirtuins, so apologies. So sirtuins are a family, which is nice, and they are a family of NAD plus dependent deacylases, and I'll show you what that means in a second. And in humans, we have seven sirtuins, sirt1 to sirt7, and they have a variety of different protein targets and functions. And one study, I mean, sirtuins really deserve a video of their own, but one study has shown uh, in yeast that when they added a copy of the gene, sir2, there was a 30% extension in lifespan. So you don't really need to know what acyl groups are, but a type of acyl groups known as acetal can be attached to proteins. And what sirtuins do when bound by NAD+, is they remove this acetal group from the protein. And so proteins can do different things with and without acetal groups. And so the process of the removal of acetal from certain proteins that are activated by sirtuins um, enables these proteins to go on and activate stress resistance responses within the cell that is thought to be the health span lifespan beneficial response. So during this reaction NAD plus is used up and the products that form one is an ADP ribose derivative that you don't need to worry about in this case well at least I'm not going to talk about it um, and you also get NAM which is just nicotinamide and We've already looked at how NAM can be converted back to NMN and then back to NAD+. But the point is, for sirtuins to continue their activity, they need NAD+. They can't work with NAM or NMN. So the idea behind supplementation is that to counteract the loss of NAD+, you can increase the levels of NMN and therefore you, in theory, should generate more NAD+. So from further reading and from listening to many David Sinclair interviews, there are some arguments that you must take NMN with another compound known as resveratrol. So the reasoning behind this is that the two of them together can have an enhanced effect. So this is because resveratrol targets sirtuins and increases their activity, whereas NMN increases the levels of NAD, which is kind of like the source, whereas sirtuins have that enzymatic activity. So resveratrol could be seen as the driver and NMN as the source. But this is merely me just speculating as to what might be the reason. There is no definitive evidence out there that does prove this to be the case, at least that I'm aware of. So another question worth asking is why do NAD plus levels decline during aging in the first place? So there is likely a variety of reasons for, for why NAD plus levels decline. But one recent bit of evidence shows that the activity of CD38 increases during aging, in which case I might explain the increased usage of NAD+. So you hopefully now have a good understanding about why there's these discussions about NMN as supplements. But the last question I'll address is, well, when should you take NMN? And so that um, refers to both when during your lifespan you should start taking it, but also when during the day. So I'm going to tell you now before I forget, we don't know the answer to either of these questions right now, but what I will do is tell you what we do know, or try to understand at the moment, and also give some of my own hypothetical ideas. So one thing we do know is that levels of NAD plus change throughout the day. So for example, we know that levels increase after you exercise and decrease when you've just eaten. So when should NMN be taken? Well, 
honestly, I don't know. And it's going to vary depending on the individual because everyone has their own routines as to when they eat, do whatever. And also it would depend on whether you take the dose all at once or if, or if the dose is split up throughout the day. But now this is the fun bit, I can at least be hypothetical about what potentially could be happening. So as you can see, I'm drawing out a graph to plot a potential hypothetical fluctuations of NAD plus levels throughout the day. And one question that I would be interesting to ask is, is it best to add NMN when your levels of NAD plus are already high? So maybe at the end of a fast period or to take um, NMN when your levels of NAD plus are really low in the day. So you can try and up the, you know, decrease the depth of the trough and increase or you could increase the crest. I don't know if that made any sense, but who knows? That's the question. So it reminds me of that quote that there's the things that we know and then there's the things that we know that we don't know, such as this. And then there's the things that we don't know that we don't know. I'm already confused. Basically, there's just a lot we don't know. <laughs> and just to add to the complexity, we also know that NAD plus is important for driving the circadian rhythm. So the circadian rhythm is the rhythm that goes on in our cells that's around 24 hours and that regulates rhythms in behaviour, physiology, metabolism and selectivity. And I have an entire video on that that I'll link that you should check out. But we also know that, as I said, NAD plus drives the circadian rhythm. And yes, as this quote this actually comes from David Sinclair. So it's interesting that NAD plus isn't being driven by the clock it is the clock is driven by NOT plus <laughs> but it's very complicated and um I haven't fully understood it myself yet I, well I don't think anyone fully understands it yet but I might make a video on it well I probably will all right so the second aspect of when is at what age within your life should you start taking NMN if you should start taking NMN remember that there is no definitive proof that it's effective yet or safe in humans so again you know, we just don't know the answer to this question and the only thing we can kind of base it on at the moment is studies that have been done in mice and so um, it comes down to when does ageing really begin and so I have a video on the hallmarks of ageing which you should check out and um, we know that, well, there seems to be evidence now, at least that David Sinclair has mentioned, that we are ageing constantly even before we're born and so Basically, the, what we've got from that is that, well, the earlier, the better, but after development, because, I mean, there just hasn't been enough studies to really know the role of NAD plus during development and how that differs between its role during adulthood. So what David Sinclair has said in a recent interview is that around 24, 25 years old might be good. Or, well, we don't know if it's safe, but might be the right time to start. Anyway, as I said, um, how safe is it? how safe is it is the biggest question right now you know if you start taking it at a younger age are you is there going to be some consequence increased cancer risk we don't actually know at the moment and the thing is we still need to have studies on nmn to show that it's safe in, in humans so if all goes to plan i'll talk a bit more about the safety side in my next video and also maybe at some point i'll try and compare nmn and nr as i already said earlier but hopefully this video has been a good introduction to the what, why and when with NMN in ageing. So as always, thanks for listening.